الحمد لله نحمده وتعالى ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل ودل خير مما كثر وألها وقليل يغنيك خير من كثير يطغيك وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين وبعد Today in Shabbat night we have uh, nine reasons that will help us to remain straight on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we discussed today the story of the hairdresser of Pharaoh's daughter and actually her name is not mentioned in the story that is narrated by Imam Ahmed that I've mentioned today in the khutbah her name is not mentioned but just because of her righteousness and Nabi Wasallam considered her and he told us her story as a lesson for everybody we have another story actually in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that tells us another way to deal with difficulties. Like this woman, for example, she was forced to leave her belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give up and to say to Pharaoh that you are my Lord and instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But she did it. And she chose actually to be thrown into the fire with her children and everybody to die but in the history we have another way to deal with it with some situations like this why we're telling these stories actually can can we relate something yeah we can relate to what's happening in places like burma for example it's happening nowadays may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from the fitna allahumma amin ya rabbil alameen Imam al-Hakim and al-Bayhaqi reported أخذ المشركون عمارة ابن ياسر رضي الله عنه The disbelievers captive Sayyidina Ammar Ammar ibn Yasir رضي الله عنه One of the companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يتركوه حتى سب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي بعض الروايات حتى وافقهم على بعض ما هم عليه they kept torturing him until he insulted رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and in some other narrations until he agreed with some of their beliefs which contradict uh, our uh, beliefs as Muslims فلما أتى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما وراءك then he came to النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم النبي noticed that he is frustrated like he's not happy at all there's something happened said ما وراءك what happened قال شر يا رسول الله he said something شر evil something evil happened ما تركت حتى نلت منك they didn't let me go until I said something about you, Ya Rasulullah. وَذَكَرْتُ آلِهَتَهُمْ بِخَيْرٍ And I praised their gods, their idols. So he had, because the disbelievers were going to kill him, same situation, right? The disbelievers were going to kill him. So he had to agree with some of what they say, just with some words, to say some words to let them go away and stop torturing him and at the same time his heart is full of Iman How did you find your heart at that time? What about your heart when you were talking to them about me and about their idols? See, so my heart was mutma'in, satisfied with iman. But just I said that to protect myself from the from the uh, torture that I'm receiving. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, if you would go back to do the same thing, you say the same thing. 
just to protect your life. So we have here two ways to deal with situations like this. The first way is you have the permission to protect your life if you're 100% sure that you're going to be killed. I'm not talking about you, for example, in Canada because you never, it never happened with you here. And inshallah, it will never happen. I'm talking about what happens in the world nowadays. Do you have the permission? But if they want to achieve the higher level of Iman, it is to do what the hairdresser of Pharaoh's daughter did. She refused to give up and she preferred to be killed. Right? So now we have two ways to deal with this. What we need is to remain straight on the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you go through the Sunnah, and the Quran, you will find the word determination or remaining steadfast on the truth in two forms, istiqama or thabat. What are the reasons for us to have this istiqama or thabat? We have nine reasons to share inshallah with you tonight. The first reason is to be connected with the Qur'an more than before. We assume, inshallah, that everybody is connected to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even for those who memorize the Qur'an, it's not enough to memorize the Qur'an to recite it. It's not enough. You need to understand what you are reciting. It's very good to memorize the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us, Allahumma ameen. But it's not enough. We need to understand what's going on here, what we're reciting. What is the relation between remaining steadfast in the truth and between the Qur'an? What's the relation here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the disbelievers, they asked, لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا They said, why the Qur'an actually wasn't revealed at once on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to answer all the questions. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Muhammad, it doesn't work like this. It's not that I'm telling you the whole Qur'an to be so heavy on you. And then he says, كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ That is actually we may strengthen your heart by the Qur'an. When they ask you some questions, we give you the answer. They come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're curious, asking about al-ahillah. Yas'alunaka an al-ahillah. They ask you about the uh, crescent moons in the different months. The crescent. Qul, the answer comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hiya mawaqeetu lil nasi wal hajj. It's for you to do the timing. For you to know the timing of things and your celebrations, your days. Yes, They ask you about wine and gambling. The answer comes from the heavens. It's a major sin to consume alcohol or to gamble or gambling. But at the same time, they have some benefits. So the answers will come from the heavens to him to strengthen, to strengthen his heart. And it's actually would strengthen his heart better than if the Quran was revealed as a whole. At one time on his heart. So when you come to, you know what? Something that we have to say that is an advantage that somebody knows Arabic has. Of course, we have to say this. When he stands and recites the Qur'an in his prayers, he knows what he's saying. Maybe he has some problems in his life. He has some misconceptions about Islam. He was asked a question about something. He, knows to re he wants to reflect about something. And then he finds the answer in the prayer, actually. Wallahi, a lot of stories. You have a lot of stories about people. For example, they have committed a sin. He ha has wronged his wife. He has wronged his children. And then it's the came to pray behind the Imam and just to recite the ayah that speaks about a tawbah, for example, repentance. Or speaks about, about being good to your, uh, to your, uh, to your uh, spouse. Or growing up children. Or whatever else. 
So it's an advantage to an Arabic language. And alhamdulillah, I have a lot of people who are not Arab, they study Arabic language. They're very strong in Arabic language. So it's a, it's a, I'm encouraging you now, when you recite the Quran, recite one page, go online and read its translation so you would understand what you've recited. And now this way we reprogram our minds. And that's how we strengthen the Iman in our hearts. So the first way is to be more connected to the Quran than before. In this way that I just mentioned now. Number two, to apply whatever knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. Nobody in this sitting knows everything. And nobody here is absolutely ignorant and he doesn't know anything. Every one of us has some knowledge in his mind. If you act on this information that you have in your mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will strengthen your iman. If I act on the information that I know, Allah will strengthen your iman. But if I just have some knowledge and I don't act on it, I will be asked about it in the day, in the day of Qiyamah. What is the connection here? The question again. The connection between knowledge or acting on what you know in this halaqa or whatever else, halaqat, and between strengthening our iman. Strengthening our iman. Look at the beauty of the Quran. Just addresses what we need. If they had done what they were instructed, what they were educated with, it would have been better for them and firmer position for their for their iman, for their faith. So act it on what you know. The day of Qiyam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, we have attended this halaqa today on Friday, and Muhammad was telling you something about the Quran and the Sunnah. Have you acted on it? That's the question. The question is not that I attended and I get the word Alhamdulillah. Then the question is going to come up in the day of Qiyam. Have you acted or not on it? So if you want, if you're seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for determination and to for him to strengthen the iman in your faith, Act on every single information that you know. Somebody might know, might say, okay, okay, I'm not attending the halaqa, so I have to uh, just stay at home. Because if I attend, it will be a hujjah. Allah subhanahu wa will ask me about it. So I'm, I'm not attending attend the halaqa anymore. I don't have to learn. Allah will ask you about your time. Why didn't you learn? You need to learn. And then when you educate yourself, why didn't you act on it? So that's number two. Number three is seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dua. Seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dua. Qala Allah Azza in Surah Al-Imran, when he spoke about the true believers, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا Can we see the link together, inshallah? رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِغْ Oh Allah, do not allow our hearts to, defi- to deviate from the truth, to go astray from the truth after you have guided us. This is the dua. So you always say this dua in your sujood because mashallah, I think you have already memorized this dua. These ayat are very well known dua ayat in Surah Al-Imran, mashallah. Rabbana la tazukurbana and I mentioned a dua today in the khutbah. I don't know if you remember that dua. The Prophet told told Shadar bin Aws about it. Everybody remembers the dua. The dua, the Prophet says, Allahumma inni as'aluka thabat fi al-amr wal-azimah fi al-rashad. Thabat, remaining strong on the truth and determination. Allahumma inna as'aluka thabat fi al-amr wal-azimah fi al-rashad. Allahumma amin ya rabbi amin. Next point, we have heard a lot of stories, we have stories in the Quran, we have stories that in our life that we can reflect on, we have told a story today, we have told a story in our halaqa. Stories will help you to strengthen your iman. Did you find this in the Quran? Yeah, we have an ayah that says this. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلُ وَكُلَّ النَّقُصُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ 
wa dhikra lil mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Muhammad alayhi wa sallam, when I tell you a story in the Quran about Prophet Ibrahim, for example, alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam, Prophet Musa, Prophet Isa, Nuh, any other uh, Nabi, any other Prophet, any other story in the Quran, it's for you, Muhammad, what's the reason? He said, number one, مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فؤادك, To strengthen the Iman in your heart. You need to reflect. Two, وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِي الْحَقِّ this is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every story that is mentioned in the Quran is, is, the, is the truth. It, it has happened. It has happened. It's not something that's made up. It's happened in the history to, for us to reflect. And we need to look at the past to reflect. Not to stay and live in the past. We just to look at, you know, like for example, if you're driving your car and you have the mirror in front of you, you have this mirror in front of you to see what's behind, not to keep looking at this mirror until you crash or something. No, you just look at it to reflect what's behind, and then you take lessons from what's behind and you go forward. That's the same thing. We look to the past to learn from the stories and then we go ahead. And then he said, number three, and it's an advice for you, and a reminder for the believers. Reason number five. I would love to finish these nine reasons, inshallah. So I will summarize them now because I would love to, to mention the nine reasons, inshallah, because I'm recording. So when we post it online, inshallah, I can find all of them together. Number five is a dhikr. A dhikr. Somebody might say, what's the relation between dhikr and determination and strengthening your iman? Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, what he says. When we Muslims meet our enemies in the battlefield, if we were to fight for Allah said because of somebody wants to fight against us, we have to defend ourselves. If we were to be in this situation, قال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا لقيتم فئة when you encounter some enemies who wants to fight you, فاثبتوا when you encounter a company from your enemies, stand firm. How? How to stand firm? Immediately comes after. Stand firm. How? Remember Allah much that you would be successful. So when you're in some difficulties, comes up for example something like حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah will defend you, khas. You don't have to take care of that guy, Allah will take care of him. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best of helpers. For example. So, ذِكْرُوا Six, number six. Having a good company, it's a way to strengthen your iman and have determination in faith. Remember that man who killed 99 people. Then he came to a righteous person who doesn't have knowledge in his head. There is no knowledge in his mind. He told him, I killed 99 people. Can I repent? He says, no, you can't repent. Then he killed him. He completed the 100 people, right? Killed 100 people. Then he went to a scholar. That is the difference between the righteous people and the scholars. Scholar, he might not be actually righteous, but he has knowledge. Then he told him, look at the solution. Who can stand and be a barrier between you and the repentance? Who can do this? There is nobody on earth that can do this. He mentioned to him another city. Go to the other city. Leave the city. Over there, there are some people who are righteous, who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah with them. Be on, them, on their company. وَلَا تَرْجِعْ إِلَىٰ أَرْضِكَ فَإِنَّهَا أَرْضُ صُوءَ And don't come back to your own city because it's an evil city. The people here are not good people. Not here in Regina. People in this city, right? Okay. طيب. Number seven. الثقة بنصر الله عز وجل This is something to, 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 it has to do uh, with the heart itself. To have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything is going to fill into place, everything is going to be solved. You have some problems now. We don't only really have some difficulties. For example, what's happening in Syria, what's happening in, in the world nowadays. 
most of us, not everybody, has one of two ways to deal with this. The first way is to despair. He's always upset. Whenever he meets you, he's upset. And when you tell him, hey, come down, have patience, he gets upset at you. And maybe he might insult you and accuse you of some false accusations. You don't care about the Muslim I care, I care, just calm down. He's always upset, right? The second way to do with this, for some people, is not to care. You know what? I'm just going to put a smile on my face because I have to go to work and be smiling all the time. I can't just give people a hard time. I have to pretend that everything is okay. Both of these two dimensions are, are wrong. What is the right thing when you have some difficulties? Is to admit it. We have a problem. There is some injustice is going on around us. But at the same time, Allah says, After this long dark night, the morning is going to come. The sun is going to rise. There is Fajr. It's coming now. So I admit that I live now at night. It's night. Yes, it's at night. But after some time, I have trust in Allah that the morning is coming. So this is one of the ways to strengthen your iman and to calm down. You care about the Muslim, but at the same time you don't go and abuse people and be upset at every single person and give your family a hard time. It's not like this. Admit it and have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number eight, a sabr, patience. And whoever can master patience, sabr, can master anything else. If you can master patience, you can handle anything in your life. It's not my wordings. It's the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith. He says, في مرعوه البخاري مسلم ما أعطي أحد عطاء خيرا وأوسع من الصبر The best gift that a person would be given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is patience. Nothing is wider than patience. And nothing has more fear than patience. That's what he says in Sahih Bukhari. So if you can master sabr and be patient, everything is going to work out, inshaAllah, the right way. Last thing, number nine, is to care much about our children and how we raise our children. Inshallah, we'll talk about this later on, inshaAllah ta'ala. It's a long topic to discuss, long discussion. We, you need to combine iman, faith, and you need to combine education at the same time so they can defend themselves. Whether, whatever they do, they have the reason why I'm doing this. If somebody asks him a question, he has an answer for this. Otherwise, he can achieve the nine, the eight reasons, and he goes outside to the school or at work place. Somebody asks him a question, and he doesn't answer. You know? And I've been to a lot of these gatherings. They have lots of misconceptions about Islam. Some of them, or most of them, are very kind people, and they ask, do you really want to learn? And some others, they ask you questions just to, to get you, to trap you. Right? And just take it easy. If you don't have the answer, it's okay. The answer is there. But it's just the fact that, that I don't know the answer, it doesn't mean there is no answer. It doesn't mean that there is no answer. There is an answer. To refute any misconception about this religion, but the fact is that I need to learn. You can answer by this at the beginning if you don't have a clear answer for any misconception from others, for example, about Islam. Uh, so these are nine ways, inshallah, from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will help us to uh, uh, to remain steadfast, inshallah, and have determination in faith. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.